Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our celebration of Mass this evening. It's the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Welcome if you join us online. Um, we've got in our Gospel t- tonight the second half of last week's episode where Jesus returns to his hometown of Nazareth, goes into the synagogue, quotes the prophet Isaiah, and then speaks to the people about what's happening. And he was so welcomed back last week, the local boy makes good, uh, and the people seem to want things just to go back to normal. And he says today, well, it's the new normal, and uh, they're not so happy about that. So, Jesus then relishes the challenge that lies before him and learns early that his ministry will challenge and that challenge is sometimes welcome and sometimes less welcome. For the desire to hear and to heed and indeed to act upon the word of God that's offered to us in challenge this evening we pray and that we may do so worthily we call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. So now brace yourself for action. Stand up and tell them all I command you. Do not be dismayed at their presence, or in their presence I will make you dismayed. I, for my part, today will make you into a fortified city, a pillar of iron and a wall of bronze to confront all this land. The kings of Judah, its princes, its priests and the country people, they will fight against you, but shall not overcome you. For I am with you to deliver you. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, my lips will tell of your help. My My lips will tell tell of your your help. help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me and save me. My My lips lips will tell tell of your your help. help. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My My lips lips will tell tell of your help. help. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope. 
my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My, my lips, lips will tell, tell of your love. My lips will tell of your justice, and day by day of your help. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonders still. My, my lips, lips will tell of your help. help. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. Be ambitious for the higher gifts, and I am going to show you a way that is better than any of them. If I have all the eloquence of men or of angels, but speak without love, I am simply a gong booming or a cymbal clashing. If I have the gift of prophecy, understanding all the mysteries there are and knowing everything, and if I have faith in all its fullness to move mountains, but without love, then I am nothing at all. If I give away all that I possess, piece by piece, and if I even let them take my body to burn it, but I am without love, it will do me no good whatever. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offence and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. But if there are gifts of prophecy, the time will come when they must fail. Or the gift of languages, it will not continue forever. And knowledge, for this too, the time will come when it must fail. For our knowledge is imperfect, and our prophesying is imperfect. But once perfection comes, all imperfect things will disappear. When I was a child, I used to talk like a child and think like a child, and argue like a child. But now I am a man. All childish ways must be put behind me. Now we are seeing a dim reflection in a mirror, but then we shall be seeing face to face. The knowledge that I have now is imperfect, but then I shall know as fully as I am known. In short, there are three things that last, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke in the synagogue. This text is, this text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. And he won the approval of all. They were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. And they said, this is Joseph's son, surely. But he replied, No doubt you will quote me the saying, Physician, heal yourself, and tell me, We have heard all that happened in Capernaum. Do the same here in your own countryside. And he went on, I tell you solemnly, no prophet is ever accepted in his own country. There were many widows in Israel, I can assure you, in Elijah's day, when heaven remained shut for three years and six months, and a great famine raged throughout the land. But Elijah was not sent to any one of these. He was sent to a widow in Zarephath, a Sidonian town. And in the prophet Elisha's time, there were many lepers in Israel. None were cured. 
only the Syrian Naaman. When they heard this, everyone in the synagogue was enraged. They sprang to their feet, they hustled him out of town, and they took him up to the brow of the hill their town was built on, intending to throw him down the cliff. But he slipped through the crowd and walked away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I had to um, get from A to B uh, in a very tight time scale through the week. I was going to celebrate some prayers for the dead. Uh, for someone whom I knew well and who knew me well uh, and I couldn't be at the funeral the following day because I had a, a funeral here in the parish and I had a, another engagement that kept me uh, quite late so I had less time between the two than normally I would like uh, and uh, went from one, jumped in the car and headed off uh, down the road and uh, as a rule, you know, you try and keep the speed limit because it's there for a reason uh, so I was kind of watching my time slightly anxiously and uh, I got there just uh, just in time uh, because I wasn't the only one I wasn't the only one there so someone was asking me after did, did you make it and I said yeah I think I did but I don't know how many little photographs I'm going to get sent to me uh, from the constabulary uh, over the next few weeks um, and they were telling me a, a story about a, a guy in the States um, and he got sent through the post uh, a photograph of his car uh, running a, a red light and, and a, 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 a bill, a, f a fine for $50. So he took a photograph of a $50 bill and sent it back to the police. <laughs> and uh, by return of post, he received a, a photograph of a, of a set of handcuffs. So he, he paid up. And I thought it was a, it was a, a nice illustration of, of the two kinds of challenge that, that, we, that we find in our lives. The first challenge is the one that causes us to raise our game. It, it causes us to do a little better. So the challenge to him was how could he defuse the situation in an amusing way and, uh, 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 and, and raise his game that way. And you find that if you're working with someone and there's a, there's a challenge and you can work together or you, you get into a particular habit or a way of doing things if somebody says, well, we do it this way and it would be better, it would be easier, it would be good for the company, whatever it is. The challenge is a good thing and we relish it, we embrace it. And the second kind of challenge is the one that we don't like so much, which is that we've done something or said something or not done something or not done something or not said something and people challenge us on it and sometimes we get angry or we get defensive uh, but, but we recognise that we didn't, we didn't do all that we might have done or that we did more than we should have done. Um, and those kind of challenges are good too. But, but we recognise um, that people sometimes react differently um, to those different kinds of challenges. And uh, what I see is that very ordinary human reaction to the words of Jesus. Last week it was, remember you're God's special people. Uh, remember he has great things in mind for you, a great call for you, a great mission and a task. Um, and would you like to be part of that? And that's the kind of challenge they like. They, they, they say, yeah, yeah. So they feel really good. Last week they're affirmed in who they are and, and, and what they're about. And, and the words that they hear are words of great consolation and encouragement. And this week there's a sudden change because the challenge is to say, right, so all this is true and you were glad to hear it. Do you want to act upon it? Do you want to be the people who accept their call, who accept their challenge, who accept their mission, who accept they have an exemplary role to play before those round about them, that high standards are expected of them in terms of behaviour, personal and social, that there are demands to be made upon them by God and for God, by one another and for one another, that will make their lives slightly more complex, slightly more difficult, and slightly less self-centered. 
and they don't want that kind of challenge. They don't want to hear it so much so that they, they hustle Jesus out of town. Um, and this is his hometown, his first among many of rejections that will mark his ministry. So it's interesting that when the people are told that they belong to God, they're delighted. But when they hear that God doesn't belong to them, they're not so delighted. But it's good for us to have that kind of relationship and balance that God creates us and calls us, has a mission for us. But that's not exactly reciprocated. We don't have a mission for God. We don't call him. We don't control him. We don't call the shots in our relationship with God. And to be open to the fact that he might call us, lead us, and ask us to go in a direction which is rather more difficult than we might choose for ourselves, well, here's where the people of Nazareth don't want to know. I wonder where it sits for us. We hear those words of St. Paul, they're very beautiful, they're very moving, we, we all like to hear them. How are we on acting on them? How are we on, on living them? How are we on our patience and kindness? that makes love alive? How are we on no resentment? How are we on forgiveness all the time? That's how we live love rather than just speak of it. And we know how much more difficult that can be. So for the ability to see in challenge, not reproach, but encouragement, the ability to see in call a mission and a task and not simply a burden for each other and ourselves, we pray this evening. To make known our needs and prayers, we stand. Grant that the Church shall offer her worship in holiness and reverence. Give her the spirit of prophecy to make known the message of salvation and to praise the mighty works of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Come in power and love to the people who walk in darkness and lighten the dark places of the world. Give the grace of understanding that all may delight in the innocence of the young and listen to the wisdom of the old. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless our families when we come to worship and when we are together in our homes. Guide those who care for the old people in our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on widows and widowers, and all who mourn the loss of those they have loved. Comfort the mothers who suffer anguish for the troubles of their children. Lighten the darkness that closes around the dying. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died, and now rejoice in a greater light than this world can give. Grant that we in our time may depart in peace and find salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online, asking them in turn to pray for us, particularly if they are sick or shielding or isolating or caring for those in similar situations. And for those who care either within their own family or home or as their vocation, we ask the Lord to be with them, to bless them and to strengthen them. And for our young people and their teachers in these difficult days, that they may continue to grow in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding and in love. 
And finally, we pray for our dead. We pray for those who've died recently, especially Betty Kerr, Patricia McCready, and Bob Etherson. And we pray for those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, we thank you for your call in our lives and the mission you give us. Help us to respond to that with openness of mind, of heart, and to be generous in our love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them, the sacrament of our salvation. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of your Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, so that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of your Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy, together with all the saints, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Socially distanced, we offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your presence this evening. Thank you if you joined us online. All the relevant notices are to be found in all the usual places. We prayed particularly for two members of our parish community gone to God recently, Betty Kerr, her funeral on Friday of this week at 10 o'clock, and Patricia McCready, her funeral on Wednesday of the following week, uh, again at 10. So please remember them and their families in your prayer. Hope you have a nice evening and a good week. Let's ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.